By now many of you will have seen the TV show The Squid Game on Netflix and obviously everyone is talking about it. But there are many different things in The Squid Game uh, that you wonder, you know, how easy would it be to actually survive in this particular game? Well one of those is the glass bridge. If you haven't seen The Squid Game before, it's uh, basically around 450 players competing for a whole bunch of cash. But the trick is they're playing kids games and in those kid game, kids games they have the chance to die. Basically not many of them will survive and only one player will survive at the end. Because of that it got me interested what is the actual probability of surviving in the Squid Game and this one in particular there was a glass bridge game where the players had a choice they started at one end of the glass bridge and then they had a choice but between each of the two glass panels that they could stand on only one was solid enough to hold their weight. So if they chose the wrong one then they would fall to their deaths. So each of these blue panels are tempered glass so they're, they're strong enough to hold the weight of a person but if they choose the wrong one and they've got a 50-50 chance every time they do it until they get all the way to the end. So what is the probability and how? What is what are the different ranges of scenarios that could happen in this particular game? This is where I was really curious and I decided to create it in Excel. And when I press F9 it refreshes the sheet and it gives us a different probability based on the 50% uh, every time a player will choose one of these glass panels. The other thing that I've created in this template is the randomized glass panels themselves. So each of these dark blue ones are the successful uh, ones that can hold the weight of people when they go along. The black ones are when someone has, has died, they've chosen the wrong one and they have fallen through. But now we know that that's the wrong one and everyone else can choose the right one going forward. And that is also completely randomized. If you want to know how to create this sheet in Excel, just watch on and we'll show you how. The first thing we're going to do is just create the heading and the outlines and we might speed this up ever so slightly just as we go along. For the shapes themselves we can just hold shift and create a perfect squares and perfect circles and just create those as white or any color that you like here. If we format this edit shape and change the shape we can change this to a different shape and make it and it will still have the same formatting so that's actually quite nice. From D to U we're going to have the 18 tiles of the actual glass bridge game itself and we'll just put some nice grey borders in the middle. This will be the player order from 1 to 16, which were the amount of players that we had. And we'll just center those. You can even increase the size if you want to. Here we're just going to have the left hand side of our, of our glass bridge. And over on the other side we're going to have the other side of the glass bridge where people are trying to get to. The glass itself we'll put as a nice light blue to start with and all of the rest of the, the matrix for when the players are alive or dead, when they, if they jump through the glass or if they make it uh, to go to keep continuing through the glass. Let's give this a dark gray thick box border and then in between let's give it just a lighter gray. Now we can go to view and take off the grid lines and now we can see exactly what we're working with. Let's give ourselves a few characters over to the left and I'll show you how to make those characters just in Excel as well, just as little drawings, it's nice and easy to do. And just uh, if we hold shift and make ourselves a nice circle for the head we can actually edit that uh, and we can make that a little bit uh, change shape so that looks more of a head as well. Hold shift and group those together and then we can make that bigger or smaller nice and easy just like that. So that's how you make it and you can tweak it to suit yourself as well. Now how do we figure out which players will survive their 50-50 chance and which players will, will not survive their 50-50 chance? Well we do it with a little trick called random or R-A-N-D and the code looks like this. We say if, uh, if our random number is above 0.5 so Rand chooses a number between 0 and 1. So if uh, basically a 50-50 chance is anything above 0 0.5 or half of 1. So if it's above half then we'll say they're alive. But if it's not then we'll say that they're unfortunately dead for this time. And so 
every time we press F9, it will actually give us a random chance, 50-50 uh, chance, and they will either be alive or dead. Now because they're the, the first player, they don't get to see any other players, so they don't have that influencing their decision. Now we only want them to continue on if they are alive. So if they're alive, basically this is what we're going to say for the rest of our first line. We're going to say if D6 is alive, that's the previous cell, then we'll do the random thing again. So then they get another 50-50 chance. And so if we continue that on, so as you can see, they didn't make it that time, but this time it's alive, uh, and they're alive, and so they get another chance, another 50-50 chance. Basically the first player uh, definitely gets it the hardest in this particular game. We're going to copy across just the formulas, and that way we'll be able to see every time how many, if, uh, if they do survive it, there we go, so we've got three in a row, they survived, but still the first player definitely gets it the hardest. Because our second players get to be influenced by the first player, if they are either alive or if they're dead, either way these players will know which one to choose. So we're going to say uh, if, they're, if they do get a 50-50, uh, so above 50, then they are surviving, but also if the person who went before them is either alive or dead, then they will know which one to choose and they will still be alive as well. It's the same thing as we go along and go down, except we just want to put a dollar sign next to the, to the first six for D6 so that it starts at D6 and now it will just, uh, it will copy all the way down. If we copy this and right click just the formulas, all of these guys get to survive because the first guy survived and they know which one to take. Now for the rest of them it's both easier and a tiny bit more complicated but what we're going to do is we're going to say if the person who who has gone before them is alive uh, then they get to survive as well but also if they have to be still alive so you know the they have to be continuing on on their journey as well so we're going to say if the person before them is either alive or dead then they'll know which one to choose we're going to say that they're still alive and we also want to check if they are still alive and then uh, we also want to check if they have a 50-50 chance uh, for selecting the right tile. And so that is the code that we're going to use and just press enter there. And we get to copy this all the way across just the formulas again, and then all the way down, just the formulas again. And now you can see we've got our matrix all filled out. But what we're going to do is just add a little bit of color to this so we can clearly see the guys who survive and the guys who don't survive. And to do that we're going to go to conditional formatting and say, select new rule. And we'll say only cells that contain specific text containing alive. For those ones maybe we'll give them a nice green and the, the font can be a little bit of a dark gray. If we apply that, then we see all of those are starting to, to show. And so all of those guys have survived. Now if we select a new rule and we say the cell value specific text containing the ones that did not survive, these are the dead guys unfortunately, uh, maybe we can give them maybe a little uh, like an orangey color or any color that you prefer. And we'll apply that and now we can really clearly see the alive uh, and the ones that survived, and the ones that made it all the way to the end. But what about our glass bridge? How do we create a randomized glass bridge, and how do we show the holes where people have fallen through if they did not select the right one? Well, there's two methods for this, and the first one is, just in our top rows, we're just going to give ourselves a random number. And so, random number, uh, that's what we want there, and we want to copy that across just the formulas only, and so each of those top rows will have a random number. And remember that is between 0 and 1. So what we're going to do with the bottom row is 1 minus our, our random number. So if, so if we select that and copy across just the formulas again, then between the top and the bottom row, that should equal 1 every time. And so one of them is going to be above 50% or 0.5, and one of them is going to be below 0.5. And we're going to use that as the logic for creating our tiles. Now the first one, when we select all of these, and we'll go to conditional formatting and select a new rule, we actually want to use a formula with which to determine which cells to format. And in that formula, what we're going to say is two things, so it's an and, uh, and rule, so we want two of these things to be true. So we want to count if any of, the any of the people in that particular row are dead, and if they are, then we want to check if it's, uh, if it's under 0 
And if it is, then we're going to make that one of the ones that the, that the guys fall through on. So we'll make that a black tile. So there you go, as you can see, now we've got our dead guy here, our dead guy here. Uh, and every time they have not gone through, if they've died, that's where the black hole, you know, that's where the glass has fallen through. And so that's the way that shows up. But we still want to show the ones where they have made it through, so the tempered glass. And we're just going to manage our rules again, and we're going to select a new rule. And this one's, we're going to say, uh, format, cells based, uh, format cells that contain cell value, maybe it will be greater than 0.5 because our other one is less than uh, 0.5, isn't it? So this one, we'll give it a nice tempered glass, like a dark, dark glass. And we'll say the font can be the same color, just so that it does not stand out there. And if we click OK and apply, now we can see where the guys have made it through. So here they go. Uh, this is the path, left and right, left and right. And if, they, if someone has died, then they've got the, the black tempered glass. We just want to get rid of the, the remaining formulas. So for our normal text, we will just turn that into a really light blue. Oh, and then we just have to fix up the, the black as well. So we'll manage that, go back to our black, edit rules, format that and change the font to be black as well. Apply that. And now we have the actual glass game. And we also have uh, the randomized set of uh, set of bridge glass bridge game for our guys to play. So if we press F9, then every time this will change and we'll have a different path. And every time someone dies, then it will have a black black spot for them to go through. And we can clearly see how many people will survive every time we refresh this particular game. This is a whole bunch of fun. Oh, that was a lot of people, that one. Oh, and this one, oh, only five people left. And of course, uh, in the actual uh, show itself, I think only three or four people survived that particular game because obviously there are emotions and stuff that get involved and everyone is trying to outdo the other person. So even though it doesn't take into consideration that, if someone just plays the game in a straight manner, then actually quite a few people have a good chance of surviving. Like this, this one's got nearly 10 people surviving, so that's actually pretty good. So that's the Squid Game template and that's the Glass Bridge template and that's a, a whole bunch of fun to, to simulate the Glass Bridge game. I hope you've enjoyed and I've really enjoyed sharing this with you as well. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.